Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week we've got a new first focal plane scope from the shooting party on test and a roundup of new gear from the British Shooting Show. But before that, I'm heading out on an action packed squirrel shoot. Right, I'm out on another squirrel shoot today and I'm expecting it to be a good one. This estate has a real squirrel problem and I'm targeting one of the areas where they're most abundant. Now, I'm using my usual feeding station with peanut bait approach. I've had it topped up now for about a fortnight. I've just resisted the urge to start shooting and the squirrels have really been building up and they've been learning to trust this feeding station. Now, the last time I arrived to top it up, there were four or five squirrels in the location, a couple of them actually on the feeder, which bodes very well for us seeing quite a few today. The gear for today is one of my usual setups. I've got the Daystate Red Wolf in 2.2 caliber. It is an FAC rated gun, but I've actually got it wound down to low power today because I'm not much more than 20 meters away from that feeder. Now I've got it paired with an MTC Mamba light scope, which is a really nice bright little optic with good fine crosshairs which makes for nice precise shooting um, and that's held on with sports match scope mounts. Uh, the setup is a, is a very basic one in terms of tactics. Obviously I've had the feeder going for a couple of weeks and I've just got a very simple net hide here. The squirrels are going to be really distracted by the feeder so they're not going to be paying a lot of attention to me or the hide um, although it has been in position for more than a week now so they're probably just taking it for granted. So. That's the equipment and the setup. Nikki's actually spotted a couple of squirrels trying to get down to the feeder while I've been chatting. So we're gonna keep still and quiet now and hopefully get a few shots. Although I'm shooting from a hide and these squirrels are pretty bold, I am wearing camouflage and I'm going to put on a head net there's always a chance of a crow or magpie dropping in and sharp-eyed corvids are far less trusting than squirrels. I'm not expecting to have to wait very long for the squirrels to come back to the feeder. And sure enough, it's not long before one clambers down to help itself to the peanuts. got us off the mark. That one dangled for a little bit but as I've said so many times before that's just a typical nervous reaction of headshot squirrels which just tend to clench up when that pellet hits home. As far as I'm concerned squirrels hit like that are dead as soon as their pellet strikes. The first shot is followed by a short wait, but less than 10 minutes pass before I'm back in action as another squirrel makes its way towards the feeder. That 
was a great kill. That one just dropped like a stone. And it was another one that was very eager to get to those peanuts. So the setup is definitely working. Squirrels are often fidgety when they first show up at the feeder. Rush shots carry the risk of missing or, worse still, wounding. So it can pay to give squirrels time to grab a peanut and settle down to feed so they offer you a still target. And another really good kill there. As I said earlier, I'm not much more than 20 metres from the feeder, and with this setup, shooting off of sticks, pellet placement really is very precise. This is another one of those moments when restraint is called for. This squirrel is sat dead still but it has its back to me, so I don't have a clear shot. Given time, you can usually count on them moving and eventually offering you a better angle. Another dangler there, but as before it was a clean kill now. I had to wait quite a while for that shot. It had its back to me for some time. I may just have been able to get the shot on at that angle, but in all honesty, when they're feeding on peanuts, they're not gonna go anywhere. I prefer to just wait until I get that nice clear shot of the head. A great one. That squirrel literally flipped off of there, it didn't know what hit it. We've not been in position that long and we're already building quite a bag. The squirrels really are queuing up for the feeder this morning. And another one. And again, it really was lights out for this one. This setup is absolutely pinpoint. 
that makes for very confident shooting and extremely clean kills. I keep hearing the odd call from crows and magpies, but it's just squirrels so far today, and they just keep on coming. And another one. There were actually two squirrels trying to get to the feeder at one point then. Now we've already had quite a few from here this morning, but there are definitely more to be had. You can see that my hide is quite sparse, but having a tree as a backdrop is just enough to conceal my outline behind the net, and the squirrels certainly don't seem to be bothered. Another one that took a little while to drop there, but again, it was dead as soon as the pellet struck home. The significant thing is that these squirrels are absolutely hooked on those peanuts, and it really does go to show what an effective way this is to reduce numbers of these destructive pests. I didn't actually wait for that one to settle on the feeder because it did actually appear to be quite spooked by the dead ones on the ground. So I managed to thread a shot through to it where it was and it's yet another one to add to the tally. What a shot that was. Caught that one right between the eyes. Unfortunately, we are gonna have to make that one the last one. It's a Saturday morning, and as is often the case, we've both got family commitments back at home. But what a session it's been. The squirrels have been absolutely piling into the feeder. Now I'm in no doubt at all that there are still plenty more to be had from this spot. So once I've picked up all these squirrels that we've shot this morning, I'm going to refill the feeder and I'll be back for another go at them very soon. Yet more squirrels falling for the peanut feeder there. And now, it's the Airgun Show news with highlights from the British Shooting Show. 
This is the Egg and Show News. Shooters flocked to the British shooting show at the Birmingham NEC last week, and they weren't disappointed. Apart from lots of great bargains, the show also saw the unveiling of lots of exciting new kit, including some fantastic air gun gear. At a ceremony on the Saturday evening, the Great British Shooting Awards were handed out to 12 winners from all corners of the UK shooting industry. The shooting show's Pete Carr presented the awards, while Pulsar, Blaza, BSA, ATN, Sightmark and Sportsman Gun Centre all provided sponsorship. And the winners are Apparel of the Year, Swazi Rifleman Gen 2, Optics of the Year, Swarovski DS, Envy or Thermal of the Year, Pulsar Trail XP50, Ammunition of the Year, Game Ball Black Gold Game, Rifle of the Year, Seiko 85 Finlight 2, Airgun of the Year, Air Arms S510 Ultimate Sporter, Shotgun of the Year, Browning B525 Ultra XS Pro, Gamekeeper of the Year, Scott McKenzie, Professional Stalker of the Year, Chris Dalton, Outstanding Contribution to Conservation, Basque, Retailer of the Year, Sportsman Gun Centre, and the Lifetime Achievement Award went to George Digweed. British gunmakers Brocock unveiled the new Patagonia edition of their flagship Bantam. A tricked-out version of the Bantam was used by Claudio Flores of Patagonia Airguns to win the 2018 Extreme Ventress title. The Patagonia, which features a tuned humour regulator, 56cm choked polygon Lothar Volva barrel, and 0dB silencer delivers adjustable power up to 55 foot-pounds, and is equipped with the world-beating tweaks made by Claudio. This is the gun that Claudio Flores won the Extreme Bench Test with last year in America. So there are some slight adaptions in there, slightly different barrels, some slightly different valving. We're not going to tell you exactly what those secrets are. Um, but rest assured, this gun is a fantastic gun. Uh, zero dB silencer on the end, which is just up here. And yeah, it should make a real difference to your shooting. Uh, it did for Claudio, and they'll tell you how much better off he is because of this gun. Hope you enjoy it. The Brocock team was also showing off the Bantam's new laminate stock from Minelli. Offering a different option from the standard synthetic stock, the laminate handle completely transforms the Bantam's looks. Um, it's available in the standard HR and also in the Magnum version, which we've just launched at SHOT Show this year. Magnum's FAC only, comes in 2.2 or 2.5, in 46 or 55 foot pounds. There were several new releases on the Umarex stand, including a carbine version of the Rotex RM8 and the all-new Walther Rain Bullpup. It's a 11-shot um, mag capacity on a 177, it is a 10-shot on a 22, and it's 9-shot on a 0.25. It's got an aluminium bottle, it's 2.5 uh, kgs in weight, so it's one of the lightest bull pumps. Uh, recommended retail on this is $7.99 to trade. Um, it is uh, fully ambidextrous, you can make it into left hand and right hand through a gunsmith. The magazine can be interchanged on both sides. The BSA stand featured no less than eight new guns from the British manufacturer, plus Gamo and Daisy. One of the biggest head turners was the BSA R10TH, produced to mark 10 years of production of the iconic PCP. The new edition features refinements including an elegant thumbhole stock and an increased shot capacity. R10. Um, BSA's uh, latest take on the R10 SE, which has been a fantastic stalwart for BSA, often seen as the BSA flagship. The R10 TH has got a thumbhole stock, Minelli produced um, in high grade walnut. Um, we have on this model the adjustable cheek piece, which will come as standard on the R10. The extra bottle you'll see here is 280cc bottle. Um, which gives us an extra 90 shots in both calibers. This takes it to 340 shots in 2.2 um, and 280 shots in 177 caliber. Um, so extra benefits there, extra ergonomics with the stock, and this helps us celebrate our 10th year of mass production of the R10. Night Sight was showing off their new duo Day and Night Scope which combines the company's tried and tested night vision technology with a conventional telescopic sight. So it's going to be a, a 3.5 to 10 times optical zoom. You're going to have a side parallax adjustment on here. You're also going to have a built-in HD recording uh, and a screen brightness adjustment here. You're going to be using it as a regular scope during the day and then at a turn of a wheel just on the side here, you turn that to <laughs> night vision mode, your screen and your camera comes in 
then all you need to do is add on your infrared torch or your infrared laser and it's going to see as far as that light's going to let it. Bull Papagans looks set for another strong year and Virac's official importer's whole cartridge was showing their new bullpup offering. The stubby PCP builds on the reputation of the super successful HW100 series. We have an adjustable butt pad here. Um, it's a, a beach stock with soft touch coating, a little weaver rail on the front, um, side lever cocking with a biathlon style lever, um, a dual sided safety catch, so it's under dexterous. The rifles are maybe four months away. Um, Today is obviously February uh, this month. Um, comes with a detachable stainless steel air, something like the 100. Uh, silencer is standard at 214 shot magazines. We will be able to do a left handed cocking version with everything on the left hand side. There will be an extra charge from that um, from the factory. It's not going to be something you can convert yourself. Um, still regulated, still same old HB100, um, obviously with a few tweaks to make it into a bullpup. The rifle is very pointable, as is the bullpup style. And what we're really impressed with is that you don't have to reach for the leather like other rifles on the market. There was a lot of interest in new hardware from FX Airguns, including the Mark II version of the famous Wildcat. The latest incarnation shares a lot of the original's winning features, plus some exciting new ones. I'm um, here with the FX Wildcat Mark II. It got the fully twist and smooth twist X barrel in it as standard. Uh, it has a top Roger magazine. Um, it comes in the short standard settings and you're able to put your own silencer on there. Sportsman Gun Centre was showcasing the new airborne PCP air rifle from ATA. The buddy bottle gun combines high shot capacity with great value for money. This is a gun uh, which uh, will produce 200 shots per charge, uh, available in 177 and 22. Uh, presently in uh, Walnut stock, um, the retail price of £399. It comes with two 10-shot rotary magazines, silencer, quick-throw adapters, regulated, uh, all the relevant gauges. Shortly coming out also, in the very near future, will be a laminated version and a synthetic version as well. And eventually we'll be uh, bringing in a bullpup as well. Um, very uh, popular brand on the shotguns. Now uh, going into the airgun market, there's going to be a great future with ATA with airguns when they're producing quality items like this. That was the Airgun Show News. Right, we've got a scope on the bench this week. It's the PAO F1. 5 to 20 by 50 first focal plane rifle scope from the shooting party. Retailing for £299.99, it isn't a cheap scope, but it's got some great features and comes with some really handy extras. So let's take a proper look at it. The F1 is 39 centimetres long and weighs 785 grams. It's a fairly large scope and it feels tough. Rated for use on rimfire and center fire rifles, it should have plenty of shock proofing for use on a recoiling air gun. It's nitrogen purged and it's waterproof and won't fog up in the rain. Constructed from aircraft grade aluminium, it's got a neat hard anodized finish and is generally a nice looking scope. The tube is 30 millimeters and that large objective is 50 millimeters. Light transmission is pretty decent as is optical quality. The lenses are multi-coated and that's apparent from the green hue on the objective lens. The kit includes a screw-in sunshade, a handy feature to stop the objective from glinting in the sun and spooking wary quarry. The wide zoom range of 5 to 20 times provides lots of versatility, enabling you to shift between low magnification for low light shooting and high magnification for long range work. Best of all, because it's a first focal plane scope, the reticle gets bigger and smaller in proportion with the sight picture as you zoom in and out. That means your aim points remain exactly the same as you shift the zoom. 
The F1's reticle is of the mill dot variety and it also features intermediate ties to offer half mill dot aiming points to compensate for the effect of wind and gravity on your pellet's flight path as it travels downrange. It's a nice clear reticle and the fast focus eyepiece enables you to keep it good and sharp. The reticle can even be illuminated to give it more contrast against dark backgrounds. You can choose to illuminate it in either red or green and there are seven levels of power for each colour. You turn the illumination off and wind its power up and down by means of two discrete buttons at the rear of the scope. The package includes a set of two-piece mounts, so the scope is ready for attachment to dovetail rails without any additional spend. Mounts that come as part of a kit aren't always of the best quality, but these ones actually look to be pretty good. Zeroing this scope is an absolute doddle because it features push-lock turrets. They don't require any tools for adjustment and you don't even have to remove any caps. Simply pull them out to unlock them and they turn with very positive one quarter MOA stops. Each click giving what amounts to one quarter of an inch adjustment at a hundred yards. Once you've got it zeroed you simply snap them back down to lock them securely in place. Parallax adjustment is by means of a nice big side wheel that's clearly marked with distances from 10 yards to infinity. It turns smoothly and because it focuses down to just 10 yards, this scope isn't just good for long range precision work, you can also use it for close range pest control. I've already mentioned the mounts and the sunshade, but the F1 comes with even more useful accessories. The battery that powers the illuminated reticle is supplied with the kit, plus you get a set of flip up covers to protect the lenses. The rear of the scope even incorporates a very clever little bubble level to help ensure that you never count your air gun. The PAO F1 First Focal Plane Rifle Scope is a decent piece of kit. I started out by saying it's not a cheap scope, but as far as First Focal Plane scopes go, it's actually one of the more affordable ones, and certainly when you take all of its features and those extras into account. So, if you're looking for a first focal plane scope with a wide zoom range and good solid build quality, this one is certainly worth a look. Look out for the new and improved Airgun Shooter magazine, packed full of technique, gear and insight from some of the best shooters in the industry. Brand new look and free video content. Pick up your copy today in stores or online. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership.